A failure is not always a mistake. It may simply be the best one can do under the circumstances. The real mistake is to stop trying, B.F. Skinner. My friends, 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. I love this. I have loved trading for, oh gosh, 15 years, decade and a half, something like that. I love it. I love it. I always wanted to know how to do this since I was in high school. And then finally, 15 years or so ago, after getting beaten down hard, just getting my butt kicked in that dot-com crash, after that happened, and I've given this story to you, I hadn't told it in a while, I was a young practicing attorney. I had managed to put $100,000 into my account, into my you know retirement account. And in my, what, 30s, something like that. And this is the dot-com bubble, so we're going back to the 90s, okay? And I watched my account go from $100,000, aggressive because I was young, so my broker uh, had me in all this aggressive stuff, and I watched it go from $100,000 to $300,000. And then the bubble burst. And every month, I would get my account notice, and it would show that I had lost around $30,000 a month. That went on month after month after month after month, and I would call, you know, on occasion. I was working hard, so I didn't have a lot of time I was devoting to the markets, but I, I kept I kept asking questions like, shouldn't we just go to cash? Why do we keep losing $30,000 a month? Well, the market's going to turn around. When? But we don't know when. This doesn't make sense. Why would I stay in? No, no, no. The market advice is you just need to ride this out. I'm like, but but it was a bubble. I mean, it's popped. Why don't I get out? Well, I should have said, hey, it's my money. Take my money out. I'm not writing this down. Well, I didn't. And I did. And I wrote it down from 300 to $97,000, $300,000, 100 to 300, 300 to 97. And that's when the bleeding stopped. $3,000 lower than I was before the boom. So at that point, I said, I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open. And at some point, I'm going to figure out how to do this. Well, it took me a few years, but finally I did. And I started devoting time and energy to it. Don't know how long it'll take you. Maybe you're already there. Maybe you're halfway there. Maybe you're just honing some skills. But I will tell you this, doesn't matter how long it takes. If you don't start today, then you're putting it off another day till you figure it out, till you master the market. You can do this 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. Keep it simple and straightforward. That's what we focus on here learn what you can from us, add to it everything else you know. It's your money. Spend it as you see fit. We're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. Let's jump into these charts. Stocks are mixed. Bonds up. Gold and Bitcoin down. The S&P 500 down just a little bit, 0.08%. You can see down in the morning, not quite as far. In the afternoon, we are at a negative 14 on our success multiplier formula. We're still green on the STC. Kept hoping it would flip over on us, but it has not done that yet. So we are still waiting to see if indeed that's going to occur. Now, the longer it takes it to do that, the more it makes me feel like we're going to run into a situation like we did here, where There toward the end, it flipped over and didn't give us much of an opportunity to capture anything. Of course, I like when it flips over and about the, well, the first candle is typically my favorite. I love it when it's the first or the second candle. When you see the STC go from green to red, and then you jump in and you quickly gather up the money. And of course, where did it happen best? Right there back in April where it flipped over and within how long did it take us to get a 2.59% gain on a down move? Of course, that took what? A day? A day? Beautiful. That's what we're looking for. I don't know if that's going to play out on this latest scenario, but we'll see. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And again, The trick to winning 
is cutting losses. Well, you got to play first, and then you cut your losses if things don't work. So that's where we are on the S&P NASDAQ 100. You can see it's quite similar. It is also negative on the STC on the weekly and the two-day. So we're a negative 14 on the success multiplier formula. Two days of down moves. Now, <coughs> the NASDAQ 100, you see these down candles that actually at the end of the day wasn't down. It was up a little bit, 0.09%. So the S&P down 0.08%. The NASDAQ 100 up 0.09%. What that means is, of course, both of these are about flat. That's why we didn't have the STC flip over on us, because there wasn't enough energy to push it over. So we'll continue to watch, wait and see, and if it gives us some trigger pull in time like it did on this last move, we'll do it. I do like to see, though, when I start seeing red, I want to see that STC, uh, STC flip over sooner, rather than later before the in energy has moved out of the move. I want enough time to catch a profit. Now, we're going to leave stocks, go to bonds up 1.56%, still in the green here. As we talked about yesterday, we're green on the two-day. So again, we're just a minus 10 because the weekly is the only thing that is down on the success multiplier formula. So <coughs> what's happening with the half-day chart? Well, it is heading up. Of course, what would we be waiting for since we are way, way below the 200 EMA? And that is actually on not only the half-day on bonds, but also the weekly and also the two-day. All of them are, well, the, the two big ones are negative, but all of them are well below the 200 EMA. So lots of downward pressure there overall. And we'll just keep an eye on things and see if indeed and when bonds roll back over. Now, maybe they don't. Maybe we just keep seeing things spike up. And once we move above the 200 EMA, then we could look for some long moves. But until then, we'll be looking to jump into the inverse of 20-year bonds, which is TBF, Tango Bravo Foxtrot. Now, we will leave bonds and go to gold. What's going on with gold? Gold was down just a little bit today, 0.08%. And of course, as we look at gold, we saw it pop up a little in the morning, but it pretty much stayed down. I didn't pull out. I went ahead and kept running ours. It was just a little green spinning top, almost a doji. And we went ahead and stuck it out. And of course, things are moving in the right direction, but not rapidly. And again, typically, as you guys know, to capture some good gains, you need rapid, strong down movement. That's not happening in gold. So not, I wasn't excited about this play to begin with, but we went ahead and pulled the trigger on it just so we could track it. When we look back at gold over the course of this last year, Gold was not good to us. It was not good to us in any of these trades. Um, I mean, you can just see where all of them were very limited. So what happens when you find a stock or an ETF that's not treating you well time after time after time? i tell you what I do. I put them in the junk box. Now, we're still tracking gold because I know at some point gold is going to take off. And when it does, I want to be poised and ready for it. It's the only commodity that we track. And again, we'll continue to practice trade. It doesn't cost us anything to follow it. Why? Because just like Bitcoin I'm about to get into that is sucking wind very, very bad, I feel like at some point that's going to take off too. So how much does it take me a day just to keep a little eye on gold? A few seconds. A few seconds. When I got something I know is golden, like gold, and thinking that Bitcoin's going to do something in the future too, I'm going to continue to watch it, practice trade it, track it, see if and when it turns around. Those who've been with me a long time, you remember back when my half-day chart in gold was magical. We used to call it, that's what we called it, the half-day chart, the four-hour chart. 
Uh, we don't use that anymore. We use the 195 minute chart because that's actually how long a half day is in the market. But back in the day, this is going on four or five years ago now, the half day chart was amazing. You could count on it day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. It was amazing. And then it stopped working. Sometime in like January of 2020, maybe, um, it just it just fizzled and didn't work anymore. And it's gotten difficult. Now people will say, hey, they're, you know, they're they're naked shorting gold, big banks are keeping it down. I don't know, friends, what's happening. I can't tell you, except very hard to track. But I'm not giving up on gold. I'm waiting to go long on gold when it recovers. And I guess that's probably not going to happen until the dollar gets really weak. And the dollar's strong now. So we'll keep an eye on it. And if and when it starts running up, we'll be here. We'll be ready. Now, what can I tell you about Bitcoin? <laughs> Down again today, just a little bit, 0.05% on the XBTF, the ETF uh, short-term future. And again, where's Bitcoin? It's hanging out there about that 1961 mark. That is about where it is. And it's just hanging there. It's negative on the two-day. It's negative on the weekly. And there's just lots and lots of downward, downward pressure. On Bitcoin, we'll wait and see how long it takes Bitcoin to recover. When it does, we'll be ready. You guys got me into tracking this several years ago, and we have been doing so for you. This 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin chart right here, of course, you can see where it solidly moved below the 200 EMA on the weekly chart so that's some strong down pressure. And we'll wait and see when Bitcoin straightens itself out. How low will it go? I don't know. I don't care. I don't own it. I'm going to wait for it to turn around and start going up. And then, like I've done in the past, I might buy and sell it again. Not now. Thanks so much for being with us. God bless you, my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters. We love to hear from you. You can always email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. Thanks.